so excited to be here today. Very excited to see this is the wall in action later tonight. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about elevated and disruptive marketing um, and reaching consumers in new and innovative ways, which Puma is obviously doing um, here this week in Vegas and Formula One as a whole. So excited to kick it off. Um, introduce yourself. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, first off, hi. Great to see everybody. Thanks for taking time out of your day to uh, be here in Las Vegas with us at you know 10:15 in the morning. That's like like 5 a.m. I feel like Vegas time. You know. So I recognize getting here early. Um, my name is Allison Giorgio, as Gina mentioned. I'm the Vice President of uh, Marketing for Puma, and uh, have been here for two days. I feel like I've been here for two weeks, and uh, we'll be here on Sunday. So really, really excited to be here with you guys today. Awesome. So we were just saying that Allison has a very long history with Puma, um, and you know Puma has a very long history with motorsport. So I think that's a great place to start. Just talk about sort of how you identified this, how that began, and and sort of why this audience made a lot of sense for you and your brand for all this time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yes, I've had a, a very fortunate great career with Puma. I have been there for 17 years, actually, as of this month. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's been a, a great, great part of not only my career, but my life. And Puma has a long-standing history in motorsports. Um, you guys are all here for F1, so I'm going to hope, actually, that most of you guys have seen you know, the cat um, in the motorsport, and specifically the F1 world, for years, um, but we've been in motorsport for over 40 years. Um, we were one of the first brands to actually sign true uh, motorsport drivers, uh, aligned with motorsport teams, and um, really get into the F1 space. And you know, we've worked with some of the um, best drivers in the world. Um, we currently work with Ferrari and Mercedes and Alfa Romeo. We recently just announced our partnership with Williams. Um, so we have a deep belief in motorsport as a sport, motorsport as a culture. Um, we, in the North America side, have been incredibly excited about the growth and interest in motorsport, especially because of the infamous Drive to Survive Netflix series. Um, so we've seen incredible just interest from a larger fan base and in turn an interest in our brand. Um, and so yeah, we have a deep belief that you know, the motorsport category is not only not going anywhere, but it's just becoming so much more mainstream pop culture and has such an opportunity for any brand, not only us, quite frankly, to be part of it. That's amazing. Uh, long history, 40 years, almost, that's crazy. Um, so in terms of this week, you gave me a little sneak peek um, of some of the stuff you guys have going on. You have activations, partnerships, product launches, et cetera. Can you tell us a little bit about what people can expect to see here? Yeah. Um, and also what you're most excited about. Like, oh, what's absolutely. your favorite part? Um, so we do, we have a lot going on here. Um, and Las Vegas is uh, has no shortage, I would say, of options in terms of what people can do this week. And I will say, as a marketer, and hopefully all of you guys feel this way too, um, what a great like testing ground to see like what brands and people are doing. So our brand, we looked at this week through three lenses. Uh, the first was through the sport lens. How do we continue to increase people's awareness and excitement about Puma as a sport brand through the idea that we are one of the leading F1 partners. We have a direct partnership with F1. We have a direct partnership with many of the teams and the drivers. So we have a set of programming and activations and moments where we actually are truly activating the true sport angle of you know our, our presence in the brand. A uh, good example of that is actually we just had a fantastic opportunity um, with both uh, Charlotte Claire and Carla Sons and uh, our streetwear designer, Joshua Vitas, they did a whole kind of uh, art actually exhibit, uh, you know, the other night. And that tied into actually the race suits that you're going to see the Ferrari drivers wear. They're not just the typical red, you know, race suits. They're actually red with white painted stripes. And that comes directly from our streetwear designers. So the sport lens and activating our teams and drivers, that's one angle. Then we looked at um, the fashion side. And hopefully most of you guys have seen, but if not, we recently announced a partnership with ASAP Rocky. And ASAP Rocky is going to be Puma's new creative director for motorsport, and he's specifically going to bring a streetwear design and artistic kind of, I would say, unique lens to uh, the motorsport category. And so in about you know 24 hours, you guys will see a great pop-up experience with him down in Old Las Vegas. Uh, we announced also our uh, overall collection that he's going to be selling this week. It's really progressive. It's very cool. It's very rocky. Um, and you're going to see some other things with him as well. So that fashion pillar is the other place. And then to be honest, the other area is just true streetwear community. Um, 
And so as much as we want to, you know, build up our brand and with big fans, we have a deep appreciation for car enthusiasts, for the car culture and car community. And so, for instance, tonight we are doing a specific event, a car club, if you guys have never seen that, that's like when all the cool people like drive their like billion dollar cars into a garage and everyone just like takes selfies. <laughs> that's a thing. Um, but it's really, really authentic to the car community. And so we're hosting one of those tonight, truly for actual car enthusiasts, car fans, with a lot of influencers and whatnot. So that's kind of the lanes and strategy we took to this week. Um, and as you can imagine, we're selling lots of products. We have a great list of our celebrities and ambassadors coming. Um, our partnership directly with F1 in Las Vegas Grand Prix gives us a beautiful suite in the Paddock Club, so we've got that activated throughout the week. And um, I think what I'm most excited about, to be honest, is just all of it coming together. And uh, you'll also see us on the sphere, so if you haven't seen Who's on the Sphere yet, keep your eye out. Yeah, so it's, all, uh, it's, all, it's, it's truly all of it's very exciting, and the team's worked really hard. My Uber driver was talking about the sphere. Oh, great. Right. There. So you're making a buzz. Yeah. Um, and I think everybody in this room is probably asking where they can get the gear and when they can get it um, as, it, as it launches. I know I am going to hit you up after this. Yeah, no problem. Lots um, of places all throughout the Las Vegas. So. Um, so from more of like the marketing lens, innovation is sometimes tricky. Um, how, how are you measuring success of this stuff? Like how, as you change mediums and try different things, like how do you think about measurement and like what does success look like? Obviously, you have a lot of different lanes, um, so maybe that looks different for each one, but just generally speaking, like how do you develop sort of that, that measurement success lens? Right? Sure. Uh, marketeers, right? That's always our job to create success, but how do you measure that? It's always, I feel like, the million dollar question. Um, for this week, I think there's a few things that we're doing to essentially measure like whether we've made impact or not. Um, the first thing is that we actually have a deep desire to, again, to continue our, I would say, perception as a true leading sport brand. And we do have some actual like social listening platforms and metrics and, you know, behind the scenes, I would say, platforms that help us to just like evaluate brand statements. And so we do have an entire measurement platform in place this week to say, does people's perceptions change, you know, before, I would say, the Grand Prix and after? So that's one thing. Like, do we come off as more of a sport brand? The second thing, have we sold a bunch of things, without a doubt. You know, again, at the end of the day, we're Puma. We're, we're, we're here to, you know, obviously get people to have an opportunity to buy great gear. So we've got unbelievable partnerships with our retailers. We've got great, you know, uh, Puma outlets here. And then also Rockies pop-ups. So we're, like, interested to see, you know, how do we do it from a selling standpoint. And then, to be honest, I think the last thing we're looking at has a lot to do with more classical marketing KPIs, things, for instance, like, social sentiment, number of engagements, number of impressions, um, and we have some pretty aggressive targets for those. Um, I would say the targets we've set are definitely higher than a normal sponsorship or a normal week of activation because, again, we just feel like this opportunity is just really um, special, and I think we have so many great partners with the teams and everything that, that we uh, we feel like the press is being on. So, yeah, so we'll see how we do. Talk to me on uh, Tuesday, and I'll let you guys know. <laughs> I, I have a, a feeling that it's going to be impactful and you're going to see it. So, so we're excited about it for you. Um, so can we talk a little bit more about ASAP Rocky mm -hmm. and about what you think that's going to do? I know that's a long-term partnership. Um, what, what kind of influence do you think that will have on the brand as it evolves and changes? Yeah, I think the first thing, so uh, Rocky, first of all, is an incredible partner. Um, you know, he, I think most of you guys probably know him as a music artist, but he has a deep appreciation truly for design and style and innovation. And I think he's literally uh, coming to the table to Puma and working with also F1 to help innovate how people perceive this sport. Um, so one of the things that we really like about working with him and the way his brain works is his ability to kind of look at um, anything, whether it's a, a category or a sport or a you know piece of product, and figure out how does he lend his design and fashion DNA into that to make it something special. Um, so he'll be doing a lot with us in terms of like product creation and really thinking about again how do we uh, you know uh, activate that lens. Um, he also then is a visionary when it comes to truly creative design. Um, so again, you're going to see a lot of like his campaign with Puma like all throughout Las Vegas, and you'll see like the aesthetic that he uses, which is a lot more, again, about like art and disruption versus just kind of like creation of like, you know, a typical video or a typical, typical piece of creative. So we're, we're gonna be doing a lot of creative from within there. Um, and then as we go into next year, he's doing product capsules for a lot of the Grand Prix, um, not only in the United States, but throughout the world. And so you're gonna start to see like little bit by little bit, like how he interprets 
Miami culture versus Los Angeles culture versus um, you know the, the different areas of, across the race circuit. So there's a lot to come with Rocky, and we're really excited. I think about yeah, just working with him in general. He's been great. It sounds like he's going to be very impactful in your kind of longer term strategy with motorsport. Like, how do you see that evolving? Yeah, you know, I think um, the interesting thing again, at least for especially in the United States, is the growth of the sport means we have a lot of other competitors and people that are now interested in it. Um, I mean, if you think if you think about the amount of sponsors each team had, you know, ten years ago, twenty years ago, versus what you're seeing now, there's a lot of them. That's that's a great sign for the sport. For us, though, what that means is that we need to continue to be really progressive and innovative about how we stay in a leadership position. And I think again, that has a lot to do with the fact that you know we are the brand that makes like you know the most highly technical product for all of the drivers. We need to do a better job of educating people on that. Most people think actually that Puma is just another logo on the uniforms, but in fact, we are the uniform creators. We are the footwear creators. You know what the drivers are wearing is you know the fireproof gear. So we're going to do a lot around how do we continue to take a uh, more forward, I would say, stance about that. Um, Rocky will lend absolutely a, a creative and I'd say more streetwear vibe that will give, I think, like, you know, non-technical fans an opportunity to get involved. Um, and then again, Puma is like, we're a deep believer in partnerships. And so if we partner with someone, whether it is, a, you know, an F1 team or if it is a designer or whatnot, we like to understand, you know, what they, you know, are aiming to do and who their fan base is and how to collaborate with them. So I think we also want to stay ahead of the curve by being like the best of the best partner and coming up with really unique, innovative ways for fans um, to just engage with like the two the two brands together. Yeah, it sounds like um, the innovation that you guys have have had in in space and with these partnerships is really going to bring new consumers into our sport um, and probably that's a huge success for you for the brand for the for all for the sport itself and for all the people. So how does that shape how you look at other things you're doing, like other places you want and other types of mediums? Um, you know, I think in terms of yeah, how we're looking at other spaces, I mean, I think we do a lot of testing and learning as a brand no matter where we are, believe it or not. You know, so even though we have like a very concrete plan this week of what we're doing and you know how we're activating and what we're selling and what products we're dropping, we're also constantly seeing what the consumer sentiment and response is. So I think honestly, one of the things we just do is just like listen. You know, we listen to our customers, we get feedback, we understand, and we use that to adjust as we go forward. And we that, and that draws into also how we operate in other categories. So um, for the people in this room, you know, when you talk about being in new spaces and being like really disruptive, like what would be your like piece of advice for other marketers as they think about you know sometimes making a lot of noise and testing and learning and, and things of that nature? Like what would you tell them? Um, tell them as a piece of advice. Sure. Um, you know, a few things. I think you have to know first off who your brand is and what it can offer. Um, don't try to be something that another brand can do or don't try to like chase and copy. Um, you know, Puma is accelerating our efforts in motorsport because we believe we have a leadership position in the technical space, the innovation space, but also have the opportunity to lead in our understanding of culture and like rally around that. That works for us. And so if you're a brand, that has a strong identity, a strong understanding, again, of like, you know, who, who and what you can offer that's different than others, like, lean into that. And that's, for instance, how, how we're trying to, you know, continue yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, 40 years of partnership, you've leaned in and certainly evolved. Obviously, this partnership looks different yeah. than it did 40 years ago. Absolutely. And motorsport continues, I'm sure that will continue as well. Yeah. Um, we wanted to leave some time for questions. Um, if we have anybody, anything, you have questions for Allison in the group? Uh, my name is Holly, uh, I'm Creative. Um, I'm interested in, you talk about partnerships and bringing like ASAP and you know, trying to bring new audiences in, in that way. How do you make sure that when you're doing that, the brand remains authentic? Sure, and sorry, a little hard to hear you, so I just want to repeat. So the question basically is like, how when you bring on a partner, how do you make sure that they're authentic and they're going to work, essentially, for your, your customer? And I, I can't tell what example you fit, right? Is that Okay, get it. great question. Um, I would say behind the curtain, we actually have a very deep vetting process. You know, it's not like we just kind of like look out in the universe and like, you know, dartboard pick someone. Um, we have like a, a real true process that looks at, you know, who the person or the partner of the organization is. Um, we start with like, do we have shared values? You know, Puma is not the right brand for every partner and in turn not for, you know, partner is, you know, right for us. Like, we need to look at what that organization or person's like, you know, vision is. What do they stand for? What are their brand values? Do they line up with us? And if they do, that's a great starting point. 
Then I think it's about purpose. You know, what is the purpose of the brand and the person working with? Because everyone knows these days that something is just like you sign the check and you move on. You know, you, you have to have a purpose and a reason that those two, you know, groups are working together. And so for instance, with Rocky, he has a deep, not only appreciation, but understanding of motorsport. And he's kind of like been in the world for quite some time. And he knows, for instance, how to take um, fashion DNA and infuse it in really disruptive ways. And our brand, you know, again, uh, you know, does that. We like to be disruptive and a little bit unique. Um, you then, you know, for, so if you figure out that purpose, I feel like that's really critical. And then you have to come to some kind of understanding also on like, what will consumers think? What's the most authentic way for the partnership to actually get into the marketplace? You know, I think for our brand and for the sneaker industry, you can't just like sign an ambassador and then stick them in a photo and then say, look, you know, this happened. Like, we've been working with Rocky for a long time, believe it or not, before we actually decided to kind of like publicly announce it. And that had a lot to do with the strategy of him getting to know us and, you know, uh, building up like a, a lot of like relationship and equity and then also him like wearing the brand. So I think the other piece is just how do you go to market the partnership that we think about? And if there's a strong, strategy as to how to do that authentically, like that's kind of the, the I'd say one of the last pieces. So there's there's a big vetting process and, and some moving things to make sure that we all feel good. We, we would hate to enter into a partnership and have the partner not be excited. You know, like we want them to like be excited about us, it's not just us being excited about them. That's really, really pretty critical for us. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Jason Adelman from Brand Innovators. I'm curious how you're amplifying the stuff you're doing on the ground uh, outside of Vegas through digital and advertising, and how do you uh, amplify that, and how do you then determine how much investment you're going to put um, to reach the masses outside of people who are watching on television and attending in person? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, the first thing I think is we get a lot of brand presence because of our partnership with the teams. Um, so immediately, you know, on TV, all the different coverage, like you see the Puma cat. Um, so we start with that, like that's a almost a media buy in itself, but it comes through the lens of the partnership. When it comes to the remaining piece of it, I think our two biggest focuses on amplifying what we're doing here this week are threefold. One is through the social lens. Um, not only our own channels, but actually um, through partnerships with a lot of influencers, but then also the actual partner channels. So for instance, like, we have a great strategy with the Las Vegas Grand Prix and then what they're going to do to help promote Puma and what we're doing. And there's one of many channels along those lines. Um, so I think using social is definitely one of the biggest pieces. Um, we also looked at an editorial strategy that I'm really excited about. So I think what you guys will see is coverage on what Puma is doing all week through very authentic editorial voices, whether it's like the sport trade, sneaker trade, business trade. Um, we felt like we have great stories this week. We have great announcements this week. Um, and so we actually do want to create some true, I would almost call it like typical PR buzz. But the way that we're creating it is very different and the relationships that we have with the editors I think are really critical. And then the last thing, honestly, that we're doing from an application standpoint is we really looked at a strong partnership athlete and celebrity roster because we believe that it's cooler for them to talk about what Puma's doing than if Puma talks about it. And so you'll see over the next, you know, four days some pretty big people, some pretty big names, some incredible, like, powerhouse, I would say, uh, partners of ours that are going to be in our brand, in our parties, at the track on our behalf, uh, doing things with the teams directly because of us, and I think you're going to end up seeing a lot be uh, through them. And so, um, yeah, those are kind of like our our three methods of an amplification of these for this week. It's exciting. I think you guys are going to have so much organic momentum just because so. you are having this like shared values and this passion, and you're so linked in. It just makes a lot of sense. I hope so. Yeah, we're excited about it. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys live here in Las Vegas or you know work within the Las Vegas uh, entertainment system, but if you do, I would just want to say thank you. Um, I I think what this city has done is incredible. This is not like uh, this is like a feat of, of all kinds. Yeah. So anyway, I think it's uh, all of us aside and what we're doing here as brands. Um, I give a lot of credit to the city of Las Vegas for for doing this and hosting it. It goes really far. Uh, quick question. My name is Justin Johnson. Thank you both for the panel. The question I have is just more. Specific in its for tomorrow's activation, where can I find more details on the 
pop up you mentioned for ASAP? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there'll be a bunch of different places that uh, we promote it through. One, Rocky will do a little promotion of it. Um, you'll see it also on like out of home throughout there. You'll start to see trucks driving around the city. Um, you'll see our Puma Motorsport handle also promoting it, um, and you will see some probably press coverage of it as well. Yeah. It's going to be hard to miss. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> he's done a great job. It's going to be a fun, fun experience for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This is amazing. Right. It's so great to talk to you today. Hopefully everybody um, is coming out to buy your new product. I know, right? Absolutely. Thank you all very much. Have fun this week.